Hi, Mark. Can you hear me? It's Kim. How are you? Yeah, hi, Kim. We're good. Can you see me? <laughs> we can see you. Absolutely. We're, we're really super excited. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. We have a bunch of patients from the Montreal Children's <laughs> Hospital with us, and they have lots of interesting questions. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I thought, let's just jump right in. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so shall we start with Matthew? Uh, hi, Mark. <laughs> A uh, quick question. Uh, what made you want to travel to space? Um, you know, it's been a, a dream since I was a kid, not necessarily to come to the space station, because back then the space station didn't even exist, but to travel through space so it's been a dream of mine. And, uh, you know, it was, also just a, it was always just a fantasy that I never thought would come true. And suddenly it's the something that became possible. So here I am. I thought I better and fulfill this dream when I can. So um, I skipped it. Matthew's uh, 15. He's, he's uh, great at a Bialik and missing a test, apparently. <laughs> uh, so next, who do we have next to? Kadevi, who's 12. Matthew. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, how did you felt when you lift off, like your first left lift off? How, what was your feeling? Well, a lot of different things, physically and emotionally, that I felt. I mean, uh, we've been waiting for this for a while and training really hard, and uh, there's been a lot of delays, so it always kind of seemed like almost like it was never really going to happen. So when I found myself sitting in that seat and uh, it was, you know, the countdown was going on, I was like, oh my God, I can't can't believe this is really happening, you know? And, uh, and then the launch happened. It, it wasn't really as intense as I thought it was going to be, but it was really fun. And, we're just blasting off. You can't really see anything out the window, but then, you know you just have the sensation of you know you're pinned back to the back of your seat, um, and then it's really only a short eight and a half minutes later you're kind of in space and you're floating around and you're all of a sudden you know, doing doing this, and uh, then you know, you're into your seat of course at the time, but you know as soon as you get out of your seat then you're floating around and. Uh, really cool but then i kind of got started to get sick and i didn't actually vomit but i started to feel pretty nauseous and that continued actually for a couple of days after i got here so it's kind of like uh uh like being a car being car sick or you know, being on a boat or something like that so but i got over it now in a couple of days so I feel good and just the whole thing was just really exciting and kind of mind-blowing well we're glad to hear you're feeling better uh so i'm gonna move you move you down to miles who is eight? Miles, what's your question? Hi, my name is Mark. Miles, how much oxygen does the International Space Station use? Um, well, it's on a technical basis, but I looked this up when I saw your question. It uses a, about two and a half kilograms of oxygen per day. Um, and in fact, the oxygen comes, it gets shipped in tanks from, from Earth, although we do recycle some of it because the air we breathe does contain some oxygen and that gets recycled here and used. Cool. Are we good? So, um, unfortunately, Mark Conrad wasn't feeling well and couldn't be with us today, but uh, I promised to ask his question. And he goes to Selwyn House, which I believe is, uh, is your old school. And uh, he wanted to know... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He wanted to know what part of the experience in space did you least expect or that surprised you despite all the preparation you did? Well, I think, uh, you, know, the, you know, we did a lot of training, but one thing you really can't train for on Earth is what zero gravity feels like. I mean, we did do a, a flight that kind of simulates it. Uh, for like 30 seconds at a time and playing what that tree falls and then you kind of inside the plane feel weightless for 30 seconds at a time but it's not the same as as being here and the space station isn't all in one plane you have things that are overhead too so you you, you think you're oriented in this room and then you come down into this room and then it's you know, completely you're like what the, what's going on so i think that's uh that's been, uh, that sort of thing i was not prepared for it's how disoriented i, I really got Hey, well, this is Megan at um, MCC. We're going to have a loss of signal at 19 minutes past for 20 seconds, Mark. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Arturo, uh, hi, Mark. Question? 
Hi, Mark. Uh, quick question. Uh, what what are your tasks when you're in space? Um, well, we have a lot of things to do because uh, well, we all all uh, all of us volunteer to do a lot of research, including uh, some projects for the Montreal Children's Hospital Research Institute. Uh, so we always have things to do related to that. Uh, you know, uh, so whether it's uh, you know, for example, I'm, I'm taking some uh, samples of surfaces in the space station, um, and, and people back home will see how it how it affects my stomach and uh, and all that. I'm, you know, I'm like this bulge you see in my in my pocket here is is a monitor. I've got a, a shirt on that's uh, collecting data on uh, on all my body, uh, on my on my vital. Oh. On l'a perdu, mais c'est correct, il va de retour. So Mark will be back and we'll get him to pick up. We'll remind him he was talking about the really cool shirt that he's wearing that picks up all his vital signs. Oh, hey, Mark. Okay. Uh, do we get cut off another that question? Yeah, so Arturo, uh, you were talking about uh, your really cool shirt that you're wearing that records all of your um, vital signs. Mm -hmm. Really cool, what? The, your, the shirt, your shirt, you were talking about being monitored in research. You've talked oh, about yeah. the microbiome, and then you were talking about your shirt. Yeah, so, uh, so the shirt uh, measures all my on my uh, vital signs, my heart rate, my body temperature, my oxygen saturation level, all this kind of stuff. I have to wear it for 48 hours. At the end, I have to do exercise on a sort of a bicycle uh, here and you know, raise my heart rate a lot and see how that uh, changes things. And there's a lot of different data that uh, various researchers will get off this shirt. Um, a lot of earth observation photography, I don't know if you heard that before we got cut off. Uh, but to try and uh, help researchers see what's going on with the earth and the environment and a lot of other things. I mean, there's just so many different things that people are, that I and other people are here doing. It's uh, constant uh, research. That sounds, that sounds really cool. So we have um, Mila with us. Mila is nine. And uh, so Mila, do you have a question for Mark? Um, yes. How do you exercise in space, and where does your sweat go? <laughs> well, that's, that's a really good question, actually. And uh, and uh, so there's a few different kinds of exercise machines up here. Uh, there's one, uh, you can't use weights like you do uh, in a gym on, on the earth because everything's weightless. Everything just floats up. Uh, <laughs> all that. And uh, so, you know, this thing, even putting heavy, it doesn't feel like anything. So there's a special machine that you know, provides pressure uh, with uh, kind of compressed air canisters, and, and that you can work through weights like that. There's a treadmill where you put a belt around your waist, and it has like big bungee cords that go down the treadmill to hold you to the treadmill, and then you can run. And uh, there's a bicycle as well. So that's going to use that as a belt with a belt and, and, and resistance that doesn't need uh, gravity. And the sweat, like every bit of water, and I'll show you this, like this is, my, this is what I drink out of these bags, and you gotta be careful because, you know, if I let a bit of water go, you know, it's, oops. <laughs> makes these water bubbles, and uh, you gotta be careful. Uh, but, the, but all the water here, including the sweat that comes off of us, gets recycled by the space station and turned back into drinking water. Everything here is pretty much recycled. Wow. That's really cool. But doesn't that mean he drinks part yeah. of his pee? <laughs> kind of, yes. <laughs> <For that? laughs> yeah, so it's, it's true. We are, we are actually drinking each other's pee, right? <laughs> uh, so all the pee gets recycled. So one, one of the expressions they have up here is uh, the, the coffee you drink today is the coffee you drink tomorrow. <laughs> She's alone. Oh my goodness. So Mark, we have Emma, who's eight. And she's, 
uh, she's got a question for you. It'll be our last question. Hi, Mark. My question is, what does weightlessly feel like, and does it make it hard to move, eat, sleep, and even go to the bathroom? Yeah, it sure does. It makes it hard for all of those things. I mean, I'm sort of, I'm, I've got my feet hooked under some stuff on the ground here, which is why I'm not just floating away like this. But, you know, if I'm not careful, I just start turning over. And, you know, but before you know it, I can't even control myself anymore. So I'm getting used to it. And I'm, I'm getting used to moving around the station. But it's pretty hard at first to figure out how to move, and you're always banging into things. Because once you start moving, you just can't stop. So it's not like swimming where you can, like, sort of, guide yourself or anything you're just stop going wherever you're going and uh and for sure that makes it difficult to uh to go to the bathroom because things don't just fall into the toilet like they do with gravity uh you have to pee into a, basically a vacuum and uh, you poo into a, basically a vacuum uh bag as well and uh, yeah everything's a bit more challenging and it's been hard to sleep eating actually you get used to pretty quickly food sticks to the spoon pretty well and just kind of eat out of a bag and into your mouth but uh, yeah, it does make everything, you have to kind of relearn how to do just about everything. But it's a lot of fun as you're getting used to that. Maybe not going to the bathroom, but everything else is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we've, we've come to, uh, to the end of our questions for you, Mark. Is there anything you'd like to say to the kids who are gathered here? And I think we have a little surprise yeah. for you. I've got a treat for you. Okay, well, I... You, you see this, honey? Uh, she, they, uh, can't, uh, yeah. Oh, they can't come see closer. Yeah. He can't see you. Okay, oh, can't see yeah, well, I just wanted to say to the kids that, uh, you know, look, I, I think, uh, don't be afraid to, to pursue your dreams and uh, and go with uh, go with what you think feels good and do their dream and anything's possible. And I know you guys aren't doing so good right now, but, you know, hopefully things will get better, and uh, I really wish you all the best, and I hope you all get better soon. So, uh, merci à Matthew, Frédéric, Mila, Arturo, Miles, et Emma d'avoir posé des questions si pertinentes. Uh, ce fut une expérience inoubliable une fois dans la vie. Marc, uh, profite uh, de, du reste de ton voyage. On a hâte de te revoir.